The Clotilda, the final ship to transport enslaved Africans across the Atlantic to the United States, arrived illegally on the shores of Alabama in 1860. Still today, there are living descendants who can trace their ancestry back to those who survived the harrowing journey. My name is Joycelyn Davis, and I am a direct descendant of Charlie Lewis. He was one of the survivors of the Clotilda, one of the founders of Union Baptist Church. I'm sixth generation. My name is Darren Patterson, and we're sitting here at my great-grandmother's house, Mary Allen, and she was the daughter of Polly Allen. So this is, this is where I'm from. This is my home. Joycelyn and Darren are among a very small group of African Americans alive today who know the details of their enslaved ancestors' experience. But sadly, the experience itself was commonplace. They were not exceptional. The 12 and a half million Africans were deported through the transatlantic slave trade to the Americas. There's a lot of people here whose family embraced the history. I wasn't one of those people. I wish I'd known I was a Yoruban warrior. I probably would have embraced that to holy hell, you know? The Clotilda survivors' lineage can be traced back to present-day Benin, a West African nation formerly ruled by the mighty Dahomey Kingdom during a tumultuous time of great tribal warfare. The Dahomey tribe who were notorious for having this Amazon fighting group. And they wanted to eliminate the rival tribes. So they enslaved my people, the Yoruban tribe. And I, on top of that, I guess they figured out a way to make money was to sell them to wealthy white slave owners who had found out about what was going on with the discord in West Africa. The transatlantic slave trade was outlawed 50 years before the Civil War ended slavery in America. But that didn't stop the Clotilda. It was a bet by a wealthy slave owner named Timothy Mayer that he could do it under the nose of the government. Mayer, a shipyard owner, sent the two-masted schooner Clotilda across the ocean to West Africa. So we were sold and then brought here on a bed. And that's how my folks ended up here. Although widely known that Mayer burned and sank the Clotilda somewhere along the Mobile River, it had never been found. The absence of evidence has been fodder for deniers to claim the ship never existed. People have said, well, there's no ship. It must not be real. You have people who try to debunk the story, but how do we get here? You have the captain's log, and you have all this information, so I didn't understand why would it be some type of folklore. I didn't understand that. The people had been called liars for so long. In Mobile, it was treated as urban myth that the ship had brought these people. Journalist Ben Rains knows the swamps and rivers around Mobile. He decided to try and find the ship himself. I was an investigative reporter, and here was a mystery that had never been solved. I did not tell any of my editors that I was doing it because I thought they would think I sounded crazy, saying, I'm going to look for the last slave ship that dozens of people have hunted for and never found. <laughs> Turns out there are a lot of sunken ships on the Mobile River. Rains found one that provided false hope, then redoubled his efforts with a systematic search. We did a full survey of the river, the first one ever done of that section of the river. When a sonar scan revealed something that looked like a big shoe, Rains jumped in to investigate. I got in the water and I started pulling up log after log. And they were making fun of me, saying, you just found a pile of logs. And then I felt something bend under my foot. And it was a piece of wrought iron. And I immediately dove down underwater and uh, started wrestling this piece loose. And I came up, and I was holding a, the plank of a ship with square handmade nails poking out of it. And I knew immediately it was 1850s technology. And I said, guys, we just found a ship from the 1850s. And that turned out to be the first time that the Clotilda had seen the light of day in 160 years. I had chills and I was like, wow, this is my family story. It's like, this is huge. 
It meant that it's real now. It meant that it's not a, not a, not a, a cheap parlor trick. It's, it's real. After enduring the untold horrors of a 45-day ocean crossing, during which two people died, the Clotilda shipmates arrived in Alabama, only to be offloaded into this delta swamp, where they were forced to hide without clothing for days while their sail was arranged. Eventually, they were split up between three plantations. The arrogance, the actual arrogance and the actual disdain for human life that you treat black people like cargo, like animals. A hard look at the Clotilda's passengers brings the reality of slavery into focus like nothing else. Of course, they spoke no English, contributing to the myth that they were unintelligent. And it was customary to strip people of their clothes on a slave ship. The idea was that it would be more hygienic for them to be naked. So when people arrived, they arrived naked. And people who were there thought that nakedness was the African normal state. In reality, traditional West African clothing was elaborate and finely wrought. And they looked different. They had tattoos, they had filed teeth. They were very uh, out of place among the American blacks. Just five years later, slavery was abolished with the end of the Civil War, leaving the Clotilda shipmates on the wrong side of the Atlantic. On the ship, that become a family. So once they were freed again, uh, they reconstituted that family. They were free and together, but they had nothing. Through sheer hard work, they gradually purchased parcels of land they recreated Africa, if you will, in Alabama. And that was a very conscious decision, and that's why they called their town African Town. Africa Town is one of the first immigrant communities in the U.S. It's a nation of immigrants, but here you know, is the only community in the United States established by Africans. The descendants of the people abducted on the Clotilda are the only African Americans who can identify the ship on which their ancestors were transported. The community they built is singular in American history. They were all looked down upon as Africans, and so they took that identity, even though it was a negative thing, you know. It was equivalent to savages and pagans, but they took this identity with pride. By 1900, it was the fourth largest African-American community in the United States, which is a stunning thing. In the 20th century, Africatown was a self-sufficient, thriving community of several thousand people. You know, they survived having all their relatives killed. They survived being brought across in the Middle Passage. They survived as slaves for five years and then they were freed, and they immediately built a community. We had everything right here, stores, barbershops, doctor's offices, post office was right around the corner. Everything. But by the 1960s, Africatown was slowly being taken over. And just like happened all across southern cities, the white governing powers started dumping industry into the poor neighborhood that was closest at hand, which in this case was Africatown. And then the city of Mobile put a huge highway through the heart of town, tore down a whole bunch of houses, and split the community in two. My grandmother would have known when it was just farmland, but I grew up during the time when these things came about. So I'm used to the trucking company, the lumber company. It's kind of the story writ large of racism in America, starting with slavery, all the way up to the Civil Rights Movement and you can see it all play out in Africatown. The Clotilda descendants want to share their history, and they hope the discovery of the ship can help them do it. This is opportunity, and we can't let it pass us by. I hope everything good comes to Africatown with this. The ship needs to be dug up and preserved and put on display in Africatown. There's the Alabama Civil Rights Trail, and the Clotilda is now a part of that story. There's a lot of people who really don't know the history who would embrace knowledge, and we can give it to them. For me, the most important things about them 
is that they wanted to go back. And they wanted to go back as soon as they arrived and they wanted to go back even at the end of their lives. We really can never let the world forget how this all happened. 